Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome, Hallelujah. welcome, welcome everyone. It's so great to be with you again today. God bless you. I can see Marjorie. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. I know that a few people have already joined us. So please say hello to us in the chat. Just say hello to us. Let us know where you are watching us from. We want to know that you are there with us and want to acknowledge you. So welcome to this live chat. It's going to be an awesome time in the presence of God today. I can assure you of yeah. that because we know that God is here with us. And I have here with me a very important guest. I know she's loaded and she's going to offload to us today by the grace of God. So um, thank you so yeah. much for joining us. I want you to just please share this video to your network. Invite people to join us because I believe God has a word for this season. God has a word for you. He has a word for everyone that will join us today. So share this video so that more people can be aware of us, I mean, aware of what we are doing, and they will also join us. So thank you so much for joining us. My name is Ayum Ejiga, and I'm the visionary for my Pay Your Game Ministries. And my Pay Your Game Ministry is just a mandate the Lord gave to me and say, make your pain the gain of somebody. And that is following the injunction of our Lord Jesus Christ, because his pain became our gain. He came to suffer for us so that we can benefit from it. And what we do on this platform is to bring people to share the word of God and to share it through life experiences so that through what they have experienced, you can benefit from it and your own journey can be easier, it can be smoother because you are learning from the experience. So today I have with me a very dear sister. I've known this lady for so many years. We went to the same secondary school. We've been friends for a very long time, and then we met in the UK here again. So I was so excited when I discovered that both of us are here in the UK. She's not a guest here. She's been on our program before when we had a face-to-face a, a -face program a couple of years ago. She was with us, and she blessed us greatly. And by the grace of God, we are privileged to have her again here today. She's a woman that I know loves God. She loves the Word of God. She loves prayers. And she, she also has a ministry called Hope Alive. I'm sure she'll tell us a bit more about it. So Mary, it's so great to have you here with us today. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor. It's a privilege to be here. Yeah, like, you know, as you just said, we've known ourselves back in the days, several, many, many years ago from secondary school. And um I, I bless the name of the Lord for his mercy and his faithfulness, what he's doing with her, through her, in her ministry, her life, is, you know, the way it's impacting people around the world. I'm really very grateful and I'm happy to be here. Happy any day to be here. Um, it seems like the Lord has called us into very, very, very similar uh, line of ministry. And it's, that's the way God works out his own thing. So, yeah, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you so much for honoring the invitation. It's great to have you here with us. So I know I've, I've introduced you, but do you want to tell us a little bit about um, Hope Alive? Let people that are watching get to know what Hope Alive is all about and what you do and how they can reach out to you if they want to hear more of what you do. All right, praise the Lord. Hope Alive um, with Mary. Hope Alive with Mary. We are on uh, Facebook, we are on Instagram, and we are on YouTube. We have a, uh, a YouTube channel, Hope Alive with Mary. And the whole thing that we do there, as I said, very similar to my Pain Your Game ministry, it's um, giving hope to people. It came from my own personal And it's also very interesting, the word the Lord gave to me, you know, when I was coming out of that trial, he said, don't waste the pain. Don't waste the pain. And I, it took me time to understand what God was talking about. In other words, whatever it is that you're going through can be of benefit to somebody else and it also can bring gain to your to your life. So Hope Alive, um, we, we um, minister to people, just encourage, bring encouragement and hope to people going through challenges and give them practical steps of how to deal with it and how to come out of it. Basically, that's what... Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. You you froze a bit anyway, but um, oh okay, did I? Oh, yes, sorry. yeah. I think at the at the last bit, but maybe those of them at the other end, I heard her. But I'm sure you heard what she said about hope and life. So it's a platform that God has called her and said, "Don't waste your pain." And through the experiences she's been through, maybe we may hear one or two of those experiences today. I don't know what she's going to share with us. But... <laughs> 
we know that we are <laughs> not time. so whatever god lays upon her heart in whatever direction that god directs her she's going to be a blessing to us i can see john ondoma thank you for joining us yes i can see christopher yeah. thank you you say both of you look alike or oh, is it a hairstyle <laughs> We are we are sisters, so, <laughs> so that's why we are looking at mine. That is good. Thank you so much. So our topic for today is it's a new season. It's a new season. As we as we're stepping into this year, this was what God was ringing in my spirit, saying that it's a new season. And um, in the last um, three weeks, uh, throughout the month of January, because what I do is that every Saturday I come to do a life class. I call it the weekly one. I do life class. And then the last Saturday of the month, I do the live chat where I bring in a guest and then we're able to dig deeper into the subject. So I've done three videos earlier on this um, month where I was talking about it's a new season. So you can visit our YouTube channel, My Pain Your Game Ministries, or you can visit our Facebook page and you can watch the video there. And while you are there, don't forget to like us on Facebook or subscribe to our YouTube channel. And Hope Alive also have a YouTube channel. They have a Facebook page on Instagram, just like Mary has said. Also subscribe and like, because I know that the nuggets that are coming from there will be a great blessing to you. So Mary, now, um, talking about our subject for today, it's a new season. Do you want to just tell us a bit more about seasons? What's your understanding of it when you hear that it's a new season or just about seasons generally? Mm. Look at the dictionary. It will tell you about the different season, like in the you somewhere in the in the Western world where they have the four seasons. Praise Back God! Africa, you yeah. know, it change the weather. I think it's it's freeze, freezing a bit, but um, I hope everyone can hear me well. Um, if you can hear us, please put it in the chat. I can hear yes. you. And if, if you can't hear anything. Also put it in the chat so that we know she will know when to repeat and when yeah. to just keep carrying on. God bless you. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so yes, so in seasons is um, the change in weather, the change, mm -hmm. and of course it comes with different things. But when we are looking at seasons, I believe what you are looking at and we are talk, discussing mm -hmm. today, it's not literal weather. We are not looking at the winter, the summer, the literal uh, mm -hmm. spring and uh, or Hamilton or rainy season or whatever it is out there. Mm -hmm. um, so we are looking at life. We are looking at situations. We are looking at time. Mm -hmm. Season, it's not something that happens, you know, a one-off situation. It's about a span of time. Mm -hmm. It's not a one-off thing. It's not a one-day thing. When you're talking about someone being in a season, you're talking about in a time and, you know, what something that a change that happens and, you know, events that happens around that person's... Uh, okay, I can see, you can hear night in the Maybe freezes at time. Our internet problem. Yeah. No, but you're fine right now. We can hear you right okay. now. Anyway, so, you yes, so, so it's fine. about... Yeah. It's about life. It's about what you, mm -hmm. what you encounter and cha changes in, in times of your life. I think that's the best way to put it. The changes that happens in the, in the certain time of your life. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for that. So seasons, are, they are periods. They are, they are, it's a period of time. And of course, when you move from one season to the other, there's always a change. Just like mm -hmm. you, you, you referred it to the natural season. Now, when we are moving from winter to summer, we know that there's a lot of change. Like, especially in this part of the world, the, the difference between winter and summer is so much. And I usually tell people, I say, when we are in, in summer, sometimes I forget what winter looks like because exactly. it's like, carrying, carrying a jacket looks so exactly. odd. And then when we are in, in winter, it's like you forget that you've had some lovely weather in the summer. And for those of you watching us from Africa, you know that, of course, we also have the dry season and the raining season. And when the dry season comes and when there's scarcity of water sometimes in some parts of, of the world, you just realize that I can't believe that the whole place was flooded and all of a sudden mm -hmm. everywhere is dry, dry and they're looking for water. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. so seasons is, is very, very significant. And just like Mary has said, the, the, the season we are talking about here is the seasons of life. Thank you, Ochanya. She's tuning in all the way from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay, she said it freezes at time, but it's good now. Okay, that is good. Thanks for the feedback. All right. So, okay, yeah, you can hear us. All right, we, we thank you for that feedback. If you can't hear us at any point, just let us know so that we'll know when to repeat and when to just carry on. 
God bless you. So talking about the seasons of life, in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 and 19, the Bible says there that it says, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing, and now it springs off. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And of course, each time I read this scripture, it reminds me of a new season. God, God says, I am doing a new thing. It's going to spring up, or now it is springing up. Shall you not know it? But today I'm going to talk less because I want to get the most out of Mary now that we have her here. So I'm going to let her speak more and I'll be chipping in a bit as she's speaking. And as we're also speaking, whatever God is also laying on your heart, whatever thoughts you have about seasons, put it in the chat. We want to hear it. We also want to hear your testimonies. We want to hear your experiences of season because we believe that as you share your experience, other people also will be blessed. Okay, so Mary, what do you think that God is saying in this season? God is saying a lot, just like that scripture you quoted. I mean, it mm -hmm. can't be, you know, more accurate or apt at the time where we are. The whole world has gone through a season. Mm. And some parts are probably still going through it. That season of COVID, season of being downcasted, season of lockdown, season of death, sorrow, pains, mm. season of the economy going into recession, season mm. of depression, season of people losing their jobs, financial hardship, season of just gloominess, okay? Mm. But for us as believers, mm. there is a change. There is a difference. And it's so interesting that you're looking at this topic because one of the things the Lord said to me this year when mm. we started, he said, it's a year of return around. Amen. It's a year of turn around that things are going mm. to turn around. Amen. And before when we, as we're talking about season, one of the things I want to say is that God controls the season. Mm. Like the Bible yes. says in Daniel chapter 2, verse 20 to 21, the Bible says, mm. Daniel wrote that he said, God is the one that controls the season. Mm. As sophisticated as the world is, as science is, mm. I mean, if they can keep UK permanently in summer, they would have done it. Mm -hmm. And yes. sometimes it gets really, really very hot. And if they could do anything about it, they, they would have. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, human beings don't control season. When it's time for spring to come, there is nothing you can do. Spring will come. When mm -hmm. it's time for summer, summer will show up. You cannot mm -hmm. prolong it. You can't delay it. You cannot cut it short. You can't bring it earlier. It is mm -hmm. God that controls season. And Amen. that is very important that we know that. So that we connect to the one that changes season. Mm. So, you know, and if God is the one, and in Genesis has already told us, seed time and harvest will not cease. You know, mm. talking about seasons, day mm. and night, precisely. Solomon wrote about it. Those seasons are there. But what mm. is very important as believers is what God is saying in our time now. And to mm. press into it. And he's saying to us, is the there's a turn around. Something mm. is changing. And it mm. is important that we become like the sons of Issachar, as the Bible recorded in Chronicles, who are mm. people who understand the times and the seasons. Mm. The season mm. we are in is a new season. It's a mm. new journey. Mm. It's a new, the night has gone. We may endure for the night, but joy, the Bible says, comes in the morning. Hallelujah. That dawn is coming. It's a new mm. season springing up. And everyone mm. listening to us now, or those who yes. will listen later, Mm. You need to know what the Lord is saying. And what the Lord mm. is saying now is that it's a new season. Praise Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a new season. You said something. You say God controls the season. Wow. I think that is a word that if you can just live with that today, I know it's something that can change your perspective. It can change so many things about your life. It can stop you from anxiety. Because mm. if you know that this is, this is, the, this is the winter season, you won't be fretting when the weather is cold. You won't be fretting mm. when you see snow because it's the season for snow. And if mm. it's a rainy season and it's raining, you won't be bothered because this is the rainy season. So I believe what we can do, knowing that God is the one that controls the season, is knowing how to recognize season so that you know which season am I in right now. And I know that if, right. if I know the season I am in, then I now know how to maximize the season that I am in. 
That is great. Yeah, Christopher is saying, I really wish science can fix weather. It can be extremely cold in Edmonton. <laughs> yes. And they provided heating for you. So if you are indoors or in the That's the thing. Place, That's all they, they, can, they can only mitigate it. They, they exactly, cannot, you know, exactly. they cannot exactly. change it. And you know, what you just talked about now, about mm. how it saves you from anxiety. And mm. truly, that understanding is very important as believers. Mm. Mm. That we are people who are discerning to know the yeah. season. Mm. If you mm. know, uh, you know, if a woman who gets pregnant has the mm. understanding that this harmonious sickness is mm. only for a season, mm. there's a way she will carry that baby. She will mm. not feel she's got cancer and that she's going to die. She will start writing a will. She will start, you know, like, I don't know, all the food I used to like, I don't like them anymore. Oh, you know, I'm feeling uncomfortable. She knows there is, this is a time for it. And like we just jokingly said to uh, Christopher in his comment just now, mm -hmm. I mean, what then do we do? Because I don't know if I'm already jumping ahead of the discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, yeah. But again, that realization and knowing and understanding the season mm. is really very important. It's yeah. very important to know and key into the spirit we got to mm. know. But what season? And all of the seasons are important. That's true. You can't, you can't jump a season. They are all mm. important. They are mm -hmm. there for a reason. And there are certain mm. things that will not happen if that season does not come. Mm. They are all for a good. You might not like it in winter as it mm. is. We don't like it. But mm. if the winter is not there, there are certain things that we you know. We are in the summer prolongs. We start hearing them in the news saying, oh, it's not good for the agriculture. It's not. Mm. Amen. Yes. But it's not good for the plants, it's not good for the mm -hmm. agriculture because winter has a way of there's a certain food or fruits or something that only would happen, mm -hmm. or um, you know, in winter, you know, so they are very important. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is great, yeah. So, um, okay, Marjorie is saying, Father. Father God, please guide me through this new season. Amen. God, we guide Amen. you through this new season. God's grace will be sufficient for you in Jesus' name. Amen. And yes, only God indeed can fix season. That's what John is saying. So Amen. now that we've talked a bit about what season is all about, and you've, you've told us what God is saying in this season, that it's a season of turn around. So no, no matter the situation that you are in right now, hold on to that word. It's a season of turn around. God is going to turn things around for your good. And sometimes when, one thing about the seasons of life is that you might be in a very dark season now and when God turns it around, it can be so dramatic and so drastic that you just be like the children of Israel that say when the Lord turned again, the captivity were like them in a dream. So yeah, yeah. I believe God is going to be doing things and you'll be doing it speedily in this season in Jesus' name. Amen. So talking about seasons now, now that we have an understanding of season and what God is saying in this season, what should we be doing what kind of preparation should we be making in regards to what God has said about the season? Yes. And, you know, uh, again, as we're talking about different seasons in different places, mm. um, most of us in where we are in the Western world where you have the winter and the rest, by the time you know your winter is coming out, what do you do? You start getting your coats out. Wherever you have chucked them, you start bringing out your coat, your warm clothes, your sweaters, mm -hmm. your jumpers. Yeah. You start bringing out your boots. You start bringing out, you start, pre you are preparing for mm -hmm. the winter season. Okay. Yeah. And uh, people like where Chris is uh, with lots of snow, of course, you start bringing mm -hmm. your shovels, you start getting your shovels ready and out, mm -hmm. you know, to <laughs> clear out snow and, you know, all that things. Mm. Preparation is very key. And mm. these seasons are there. And that's why we talk about being like the mm. sons of Israel. Like I will understand season. Because when you mm. understand season, it mm. helps in your preparation. You know where you are. Because where you don't prepare, they say they, mm. if the failure to prepare is already preparing to fail. Mm. It will come upon you and you cannot handle it. Mm. The season we are talking about that we are getting into now is that season of a turnaround. Is that season of more? Mm. Is that season of more? But if you are going to enter that season, are you ready for it? Mm. Do you have enough capacity for it? Are you prepared mm. for the, the, the change that is about to happen in your life? Because when you are not ready, 
They say when preparation meets opportunity, that's what is called success, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Where if you are not ready for what God is about to do, it will only go over your head. You keep hearing mm -hmm. it's a new season, it's a new season. I thought God said it's a new season. What's happening? Mm -hmm. No, because you were not prepared for the season that you're about to come into. Mm -hmm. So one thing that we must do as we are looking right in, into this year, and it's good that we are looking at this at the beginning of still at the you know beginning of the year is to mm -hmm. begin to prepare prepare yourself for that next level for that mm -hmm. i don't know what that new i mean to you for some people it is a, it's a change of career some people it's a promotion for some people mm -hmm. it's, a, mm -hmm. it's a baby those who have been waiting on the mm -hmm. love of the foot of the womb for some it is to get married for some it is um is uh, to buy a new house are you ready mm -hmm. if that promotion lands on your feet now we are you ready capacity wise are you ready with all that you have in place to be able to handle it mm -hmm. are you prepared for that marriage are you preparing mm -hmm. yourself if god says a new season yes the old is mm -hmm. gone are you ready remember what the scripture says god said he will not pour a new wine in the old wine skin mm -hmm. Bear in mind, it's new season. So mm -hmm. everything becomes new. Mm -hmm. in the, when we are again, you know, I have to give examples in the Western world. I know some people might be joining from your know, watch later from other parts of the world in Africa or whatever. So but bear with me if I give this illustration about how you come to autumn and all the, the trees begin to shed their leaves. It mm -hmm. is also in preparation for the next season. They are preparing mm -hmm. for the season of winter. Mm. for some reason so at the end of the day you know you see ants even ants they do prepare for winter season the scripture said it in proverbs isn't it where they begin to gather their food they begin to prepare they are gathering food for that season so mm. this new season god is bringing your life are mm. you ready are you just claiming and saying i'm receive i receive and you're claiming prophecies and you wonder why the prophecies are not being fulfilled are you expanding your capacity are mm. you enlarging your coast mm. okay break the nest the the the, the, the expand your tent is what the law said in isaiah chapter um 52 verse 4. expand your, mm. your tent, and it is so important that because god is kind of saying about the same mm. thing to us all around Mm. you know in, on my on my videos on uh youtube on my youtube channel i'll be the same thing i'll be talking similar thing i'll be talking about and talking about is a season of more because god gave me a revelation mm. about showing me about that more is a turn mm. around there's more coming but are you mm. ready are you prepared for it and you know mm. several videos i've done and the similar thing that you are doing i uh, mm. you know my, my daughter joined a church online and she said, Mom, you need to listen to this message. At the time I listened to it, I was like, oh my goodness. I had mm. not only had listened to it before I did those videos. It would be like, okay, I had heard it. No, I had mm. not. I, you know, it was just so similar. Mm. And that confirms mm. me that what it is mm. a new season. But mm. again, the same thing that I said there, Mm. And uh, even because of this meeting, I last night mm. I uh, I don't listen to your messages to be honest. Mm. <laughs> you know, what I've been doing on this new season, but last night mm. I listened, I'm like, oh my goodness, mm. I was almost blown away. I was like, the same mm. thing <laughs> because mm. in my past four videos is the similar mm. thing that I've been talking about. So mm. God is saying to us, uh, prepare, mm. Mm. enlarge your course, enlarge your territory. A couple of weeks ago, I preached in church and I was saying, you know, don't settle for less. You know, there is more. And one of the things I was also talking about is that if you, one of the key things I spoke about in church, is it two, three weeks ago? I said, mm -hmm. if you want to be more, if you, uh, sorry, if you want more that the God, God is bringing, mm -hmm. you have to be more. You first. Mm -hmm. Come start with you. you have to be more first. You have to change your mentality. You have to change your mindset to to allow that more. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I go into the mindset on well, my last video or two, mm -hmm. I talked about that. If I go into that, it took us forever. But you need to change the old wine skin. Mm -hmm. And to start with the way you think. If you are limited mm -hmm. yourself and say, I can't, nothing good can come out of my life. And that's how they always say this. And it never happens mm -hmm. for me. It never happens in my life. And you have lived mm -hmm. in that, you know, have that mindset of little. You are mm -hmm. praying for 
approach or yeah to your saying to yourself, well, you know, I don't think I can do it. I don't think it, you know, I'm good mm -hmm. enough. You, until you begin to change those mindsets, begin to change mm -hmm. that mindset that have limited you, that have kept you. We are where we are now. Where we are now is a product of our mindset. And if you're going to receive that more, mm -hmm. you have to. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a definition of insanity that we all know. Doing the same thing and expecting a change. If you want a change, then you have to change. That mm. new that God wants to do must start with us. Mm. That new mm. habit. The mm. old habit you have to let go that has held you down, you know it. Mm. My days of retreat, God really dealt with, with me or with us, myself and my husband. We sat down to identify what he has been holding us back. It's not God. A lot of times, it's not even demons. It's not which. <laughs> you know, that's the truth. <laughs> we had that honest meeting and we, we wrote down and did an evaluation and assessment of ourselves. We had that moment of reflection to say, this happened, this is the problem. And if I am to change this year and become that more that God wants me to be this year, this habit can't go on with me. It has to change. Mm. My life has, to, in my, if I ought to change my life, it must be start, I must start with my habit. Mm. What is the habit that you have right now that you mm. have been going on with that is not helping you? It's not, it's not, there's no profit from it. If it's mm. too much time on TV, a habit mm. of sleeping too much, a habit of eating too much, a mm. habit of, 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 of um, talking too much, too much time on social media. <laughs> those are, are habits you need to look at them and then begin to build new habits new habits mm. you don't want to get rid of a habit they say acquire new one in the place of those wrong things you were doing what are those new things that you will begin to do mm. if you want that new change mm. in your habit prepare for it by making changes that starts first to within hallelujah mm. i hope yeah. I, I, no, it's right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. And yeah, mm -hmm. this is just a confirmation mm -hmm. that this is what God wants from us in this new season. Because for us to be speaking about the same thing and we didn't listen to one another, and then for you to listen to somebody else again, the person is speaking the same thing, then it, God is just telling us, make capacity. Make mm -hmm. capacity. Because if God says it's a new season, He wants to do a new thing in your life. Assuming God says it's a new season, you're going to have a baby. And you don't know anything about baby. You don't know anything about taking care of a child. You you can't you, you you can't make any sacrifice for anybody. Everything has to be about yourself. Assuming you have that baby now, the baby wakes up in the night and is crying for food, and you just turn your back and you say, ah, no, nothing disturbs my sleep. Me when, when I'm sleeping, I must complete my sleep. I don't want interruption. Yeah. What do you think will become of that baby? And that is why sometimes we see that some children have been abused and they grow up to be what you, we don't want them to be because the parents have not taken time to prepare themselves to know how to parent. And it applies mm -hmm. to all areas of life. Mm -hmm. You are believing God for a promotion and God says, it's a new thing, I'm about to promote you. And then the opportunity comes. And many times we are the one that sabotage this opportunity ourselves because I might just do something now and just blow it up. And mm -hmm. that is what we are, we, are, we, are, we are trying to avoid now. God says mm -hmm. it's a new season. He is certain to bless us. But when the blessing comes, are we ready to receive it? Can mm. we manage it when it comes? If you are believing God for a breakthrough and God gives you one million pounds right now, can you handle it? Or will you just go and just uh, begin to just throw parties and buy all the designers and in the oh, three months, the money is gone and you're wondering, ah, uh -huh. how did one million go just now? Mm. Then are you, are you really ready? So let's just begin to create new habits. Whatever God is saying, I believe God speaks to each and every one of us. And, I, and as we are speaking now, there's something that might resonate with you better. That is what God is saying is about to do in this new season. So begin to ask yourself, this thing I'm believing God for, this thing that God is about to do in my life, if it happens now, can I handle it? And if the answer is, if you're not certain whether you can handle it, then begin to ask yourself, what can I do to put me in a better position to handle this blessing that God wants to give to me? Exactly. What can I do to put myself in that position? And I believe as you ask those questions, answers will begin to come. And then you will now find yourself making capacity so that when the new thing happens, you are ready for it. You are just ready to grab it. And just like Mary said earlier on, success is when opportunity meets with preparation. So you are preparing yourself and the promise of God meets with your preparation. And all of a sudden, you become an overnight success to people. 
People will say, ah, where did this one come from? She's an overnight success. They don't know that you've been preparing yourself. And then when they season mm. you, God mm. now landed it on you. And all of a sudden, you now become a success. And I believe that is something that will happen in the life of someone that is watching us right Amen. now. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So then, you know, yeah. It's interesting that what um, I saw what uh, Christopher uh, wrote uh, there, and I was one of the things I was I was going to also speak about exactly Joseph's example. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, the seasons, those those seasons of of dryness and that season of abundance, but it mm -hmm. took preparation to handle the dryness. Mm -hmm. The abundance time, what did they do? They were storing up. And why did that happen? Because Joseph had an understanding. A revelation had come. Mm. A revelation had come. There are other parts of the world who had to go to Egypt to rely on Egypt at that time because they had not, they didn't have that understanding. And it's mm. important as Christians that we have that understanding, that we are already always miles ahead of whatever mm. season the Lord brings us to. Bear in mind that, you know, seasons is in God's hands. Mm. Is in God's yeah. hands, but he, he gives, he tells us, and he tells us what is to happen. Mm. It's mm. if, if Joseph never took action, or if mm. Pharaoh never took heed to the advice, mm. you, you, only God knows what would have happened. Again, as yeah. you're hearing us now, it's not by accident. God mm. is stirring up the church to mm. say, get ready for the thing I'm about to do. <coughs> get ready for the thing that I need to do. Amen. Amen. That is great. Thank you so much. Now I'm going to get a bit more personal now. So have you ever experienced a change in season in your life? And I believe the answer will be yes. And if it's yes, can you tell us about that season? <laughs> but feel free to say no anyway. <laughs> no, I, I believe that we have all lived in this country. We have all experienced change in seasons. I'll be sitting here lying if I said I have not right. experienced change of season. I'll be lying. Several, Thank several. You. As we said, you know, these seasons, they come mm -hmm. and they go. I've had several mm -hmm. of them, several mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. seasons. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, maybe the one I will speak about is, uh, mm -hmm. because you mentioned it from the beginning, where that mm -hmm. got me where I am there. You know, mm -hmm. because for the first time in my life, it became like that season of drought that happened to um, uh, the, to Egypt, uh, or the whole world at that time, because every mm -hmm. other country coming to Egypt to eat. Uh, and interestingly, before I that incident happened, God had already started preparing me as well. He told mm -hmm. me to build up my faith. That was 2014. Mm -hmm. He said, I should begin to build up my faith. And I was thinking, in my mind, I was like, wow, it's mm -hmm. a new season. I'm believing God for this. This is going to happen. Mm -hmm. now. I'm building up my faith for that. But I didn't mm -hmm. know it was Season, another kind of season. So mm -hmm. and truly, thank God I obeyed him. And I began to, I was binging on every faith mm -hmm. message, word, mm -hmm. scripture. I was, you know, just at that period, I would listen to Kenneth Hagin, almost all the Kenneth Hagin messages I listened to that period. You know, go mm -hmm. all the way back, listen to his messages, Kenneth Copeland, Jerry mm -hmm. Sebel, all these faith mm -hmm. Preachers, I was listening to them. I was reading books on faith. Everything I was doing around it then was about faith. I didn't know it was that God just preparing me for the new that season. And I, then I came yeah. to that winter season of my life where all hell let loose. It was terrible. It's, it is no aspect of my life that I didn't come under attack. I came under attack yeah. with my career, attack with the finances attack with uh, and, um, my health, you know, I got preg pregnant, which mm -hmm. when, when I wasn't planning to, and then, you know, found that it was a twin, then I lost one of them at uh, about almost seven months of pregnancy, and then mm -hmm. got a terrible news confining the second one, so it was this constantly one thing back a back to back, you know, it was really a back to back throughout almost uh, that year, 2015. And then, mm -hmm. you know, as if to crown it up, I, 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 when I had the baby, I almost died. In fact, there was a night that it was the grace of God that saw me through that night. My husband mm -hmm. had to start sending messages to people, please pray, because mm -hmm. I was almost going to die. The doctors couldn't diagnose what the issue is, but, you know, mm -hmm. my system was shutting down. It was terrible. Mm -hmm. Mm. Two weeks I went through that. 
So, you know, it was like, God, when is this going to come to an end? It was like mm. everything I knew about God was a lie. It was like mm. my life was just going, I just even don't know how to put it to words when I prayed all manner of prayers. But then it was that season. It was mm. that season. And I thank God that God brought me out of that season. And mm. when I came out of that season, again, I saw the flowers again. The mm. tree began to blossom again. Things turned around. It became Amen. a great You Amen. know, when I was in that winter season, it was mm. like, you know, you will pray God is so far away, it's not hearing. But mm. it came a time that before I asked, I was getting answers. Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Word first Peter mm -hmm. 5 10 to me to say mm -hmm. after you said that the God of all grace <laughs> who mm -hmm. has called you unto his eternal glory after you have mm -hmm. suffered for a while he gave me that mm -hmm. scripture that he mm -hmm. will perfect establish strengthen mm -hmm. and say to me and truly mm -hmm. God began to do that I began to see all these different areas that I was hit back left right and center God began mm -hmm. to restore God brought me into a new season so mm -hmm. to that yes I have and I've seen how it, that even though that te so called terrible season of my life was also preparing mm -hmm. me also mm -hmm. for this mm -hmm. season where I am now it mm -hmm. was if, if I didn't go through that dark moment Mm -hmm. I won't I won't be able to handle the blessings that I'm getting now. The increase mm -hmm. that has come in my life now. My mm -hmm. career is picked up. So many areas of my life has changed around. Honestly, mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing what God can do. But, mm -hmm. but then, I thank God also for that dark season, that winter. That's mm -hmm. why I say all the seasons have their purposes in our lives. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so, so I'm happy. And one more thing I need to add about that issue again. When the mm. lockdown happened in 2020, in 2020 was, you know, that period was when my own turn around, the real, the blessings began to pour in. I keep saying wow. that. Wow. It was, it was, what, it was what was, because mm. I know this year is going to top it. One of my yeah. best years, <laughs> because things opened up, things, mm. opportunities began to come. Things mm. I you know I, I I got into a new jo job role in that job again I got lifted again things mm. be things changed for me and all the areas in my ministry Amen. in 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 purpose mm. like in my purpose and other things that I began to mm. do for God now all mm. happened in that moment also mm. and all mm. the issue of that being sensitive and knowing mm. that this is happening and mm. you know positioning ourselves to have it. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Can you hear what Mary said? When lockdown happened, that people were being followed, people were losing their job, things were wow. difficult. That was when her own turn around to a good season started. If Amen. I were you, I would keen to that because that is great. Because the Bible says, when men say there is a lifting, then when men say there is a cast down, we will say there is a lifting up. And that is mm -hmm. what she has experienced. And mm. I believe that as you are hearing this, you can tap into it and you can experience that yourself. And one of the things I said in one of the earlier videos I did this month is that when God says it's a new season, don't measure it by the seasons of the world. If the world, if, if they, if, even if they are, if they are um, predicting that it's going to be recession, there's going to be this, that is not your own problem. We should live by the word of God as children of God. So that when God says it's a new season, we are aligned with the word of God. The Bible says, whose report will you believe? Is it the report of the Lord? So Mary's testimony now have just confirmed it, that even if they are casting down in the world, they can still be lifting up for you as a child of God. And I believe that is what God will do for someone that is listening to us right now. In Amen. Jesus. Amen. Whatever the report of the doctor, yes. Sorry. Whatever the report of the doctor, God can turn it around. And Mary has, Mary, has, Mary has testimony to share to that. Let me let you talk. Go ahead. Yeah, so quickly, in terms of what God did when, mm. from that lockdown, when everybody losing their job and everything, do you mm. know what happened? Lockdown happened mm. and a lot of people then felt, oh, you know, it's Netflix now. Because you are tight, you are trapped at home. There is no nothing mm. to do, nowhere mm. to go. People are watching TV, eating, and are getting fat, adding weight, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm. But do you mm. know what God called me to do? From mm. that, as soon as lockdown happened, my all, when I was talking about habit, my habit mm. changed. Mm. My habit completely changed. Mm. I was shocked at myself. How mm. God just led me in that part of 
My mm. waking up time, I started having mm. a regiment in my life to say, mm. I have to wake up as if I'm going to work. And mm. prior to this time, because of my daughter, I had not started working. I had not returned mm. to work. So for how many years I've not been going to, to work? So uh, except mm. I volunteer here and there, I'll do other things, but mm. you know, normal work. But I had already said in my mind that that year when she goes into full time, in mm. school, I was going to go back to work. I'd already planned it. But then lockdown ha will happen. But it was for the lockdown that I, my habits began to change. My wake up mm. time changed. My I started studying. I started reading, mm. which I didn't like. I joined mm. AU1 or your 15, mm. uh, whatever group. A little lot of growth. <laughs> Yes, so please mm. contact her if you need to be part of that master class. It also mm. did help me, even though, yes, I started the habit before I joined that class, so it also mm. helped to facilitate or uh, consolidate mm. it. So I started making those changes in my life that mm. I have the time I'll sit on my desk and I will go into personal development. I was attending webinars and courses. I was making good use of my time. That I had a closing time. I had a schedule until mm -hmm. about six o'clock. Then I will close. That is when I can mm -hmm. say, let me listen to the news or do any other thing. And mm -hmm. I thank God that preparation was what helped me. Because when I got mm -hmm. into job, it was easy peasy. I haven't been out mm -hmm. for about five years, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 you know, before then. It became easy. God saw my readiness and preparation. So mm -hmm. when other things began to fall in, then it became easy. I thought I should, you know, just mention that as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I believe we are getting nuggets from what uh, Mary is sharing and from the discussion that we are having here today. That yes, when God says it's a new season, we have a part to play. Our own part is to make ourselves ready to receive. Because if God says it's a new season and you're not ready, then it will just, it, whatever blessing he has for you can just pass you by and somebody else will just collect the blessing. But, but I believe you want your blessing to come to you. If God has marked a blessing for you, let that blessing come to you. So whatever preparation you need to make, please begin to make it now. I know Marjorie was, um, she, 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 she said she's having problems, but they're still listening anyway. I hope you can hear us better now. And if you can't, um, uh, we'll see what we can do about that. But sorry about uh, any hinges that you're having. But uh, the rest of you, if you can hear or just let us know in the chat. And if you can't hear, let us know as well. So thank you for that feedback. So we have a, a part to play in the new season that God is bringing our way. And our part is to just, our part is easy anyway, just get yourself ready. Just mm -hmm. like somebody getting ready for work, just like Mary said now. She was getting herself ready as if she was going out to work, as if, when if I come, if I turn up late, I'm going to receive a query. So because with that kind mm -hmm. of mindset, help you to mm -hmm. just be up and going. And it got you ready that by the time it was time for you to go into work, it was not a, it was not mm -hmm. a big transition anymore because you've already mm -hmm. prepared yourself, you positioned yourself for that mm -hmm. season. So thank you so much for sharing that. So based on the seasons that you've been through, because you talk about the season of going through that um, intense trial, I know you didn't tell us details of where you went, of what you went through, but I've done one video with Mary before where she shared the story of, of in more details. And you can find that video on my YouTube channel. And um, what was the title of that thing that we did now? Okay, I think it's time to rebuild. Is the title? Yeah, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, to yeah, about rebuilding. So if you go on my pay your game um, Facebook page or our YouTube channel, and you check the live chats that we have, I did one with Mary. It's time to rebuild, and it was powerful. She shared the details mm. of what she went through, and how God brought uh, turned it around for good. So it was not a palatable season, but thank God that she prepared. And funny enough, Mary and I seem to have similar experiences mm. because I also had that season that I went through something similar. And I knew that God was also preparing me because I remember when I, when I came to Ireland to have my baby, I was coming and God just told me, I just had this nudge, just come with a lot of messages because then we didn't have YouTube and all these free channels that you can just listen to things um, freely now. That was about 18 years ago. So... I just came with a lot of messages that, okay, when I have the baby and I'm bored, I'll just be listening to all these messages. Not knowing that those messages, God knew that they were going to be challenged in the way. And those messages were what was going to keep me sane. They were going, what was going to keep me in the faith. There was one particular one that I love so much. I call it a faith booster. That anytime 
I'm getting discouraged. I just go and play it again. And I'll see myself scrolling in the room with my baby. I'll just be screaming. I'll just be, <laughs> so I will cry. Mm-hmm. I will shout. I will do, and they really helped me to take me through that season. So what mm-hmm. if I didn't come with those things? When I had that, that leading, that voice come with messages. What if I didn't come with messages? Maybe mm-hmm. I would have, maybe slump into depression. Maybe I've done mm-hmm. something funny. Mm-hmm. I've done something overwhelmed. So God mm-hmm. is speaking to you right now. He's telling you, get yourself ready. And you know what that get yourself ready means. And when we're getting ourselves ready, it may not be comfortable all the time. But one thing that like, I tell people when I do the mastermind class is that your, your breakthrough always lies on the other side of comfort. You need to get out of your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. So God is telling you now, get out of your comfort zone. This preparation, maybe waking up earlier, maybe reading something, maybe just finding more information about a particular something so that when the opportunity comes and they ask you about it, it's like they, they are well, wondering you know. how come you know so much about yeah. it. And that will just get you to where you need to go to. So make preparation. We can't emphasize it enough. Make preparation. Yeah, okay. Christopher said I can hear you, but it's a bit of echo. Anyway, it is well. I thank God that you can still hear us. Yeah, <laughs> it is well. All right, so... Mm-hmm. What lessons have the experience that you've been through of seasons taught you? What lessons like? Yes, um, I think I've I spoke about it already as I was saying all that. But again, okay. just to, to itemize them, we had a lot of lessons. Mm. A lot of okay. lessons. One of the things I learned is that um, God is in control of the seasons. And mm. uh, number two, the seasons didn't come to, um, to destroy me, however good or bad it, it is. All of them, they are all wrapped up. They are all what form us to become who we are. Mm. So I've learned also to depend on God, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot on God. Because if God, you know, the one who has his hand on the thermometer, you know, you don't need to fear the fire <laughs> because he will not let you roast. He, mm. he, not it. he said he will not allow the trials that are beyond you to come. Mm. So I learned that. No matter if I have the right attitude while mm. I am in it, mm. then the intended result is what I will mm. get. Amen. If I have the right perspective, if I mm. have it's just like you, you, I think we were saying earlier about the uh, you know uh, the the winter. If the winter come and you start throwing the fist and you start acting up and killing yourself, mm. it's, you're not going. It's not going to go. If you have the right man again, the right warm clothes, you know, the right clothing and you know, something to protect yourself, and then you will, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You know, Chris is in Canada, and that's like he's saying to us, said to me, Chris is my friend, known him for over 20 years now from uni. And I've always said, How do they survive in that kind of place? How? Mm. You said I can mm. never, no, I can never live in Canada. But they mm. live there. How? They, they've survived this while because they've mm. learned to, to adapt. Mm. That's one thing God has given us as human beings. I've learned mm. that it's amazing, adapt. And the ability mm. to adapt, God has given you. All that you need for that season is already inside of you. Mm. It's already in you. Tap into you. There's a way of escape already. So it's taught mm. me that. It's taught me dependence of God. It's taught me to grow through it. There's always mm. a moment and a growth at the end of, of it. If I only I can endure this moment, there is a definitely a growth at the end of it. Amen, amen. I can like, I just love what Chris said now. He said, there's no bad weather. There's only bad dressing. Wow, that is yeah, powerful. Exactly. <laughs> there is no bad weather. There's only bad dressing. So if it's winter and I choose to wear my spaghetti dress uh, and I just come out without covering myself, then I, I will catch cold. I can catch pneumonia. Pneumonia. I can even collapse in the midst of the cold. And then I'll be blaming the nothing. weather. So there is no bad weather. Thank you so much, Chris. That is powerful. I think that is a nugget that I will, I will continue to use. There is no bad weather. There is only exactly. bad dressing. Wow, wow. And I like what you said, Mary. You said that um, you, you said that God has his hand on the thermometer and he will not allow you to roast. If somebody can live here with that word, wow. You will not be, you will not be, you will not be, be moved no matter what you are going through. Mm. Because know that I am a child of God. Yes, mm. he said, you may pass through fire, but it will not consume you. At all. You may pass through the flood, but it, it can, there's no way you, you will get drowned in it. So he has his hand mm. on the thermometer. So even if he turns it up and it looks like you are going to burn and you are screaming, 
it, it will mm. not let you get burnt. That is a word. Exactly. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, I'll tell you, I, have, um, I think, in, um, yeah, there's a sharing in the chat there by my Penion Game Ministry, the video about um, the one we did, the, the, the link is there. So I believe you can see the exactly. link there and you can go back and watch it. You'll really be blessed watching that video. So thank you so much. We're going to be wrapping up now because of our time. How the time flies so quickly. So quickly, oh my goodness. <laughs> so, <laughs> so quickly, yeah. But because we don't want to keep people for too long, we try to keep this within an hour so that um, it mm -hmm. doesn't get too long. But yeah. I know that Mary will come back another time again. So for someone that is going through a situation, going through a season, and it doesn't look good, doesn't look like what God has promised. I know all that we've been saying has been going towards that and it will be like, what kind of specific word do you have to say to such a person? The person, the person say, okay, God has promised this, but my current situation does not look like it at all. And they don't know what to do. What will you say to such a person? What I'll say to you is this. I'll just bring you this, remind you again, the story of Joseph and David. David, those two people, you know, those who know me know that I can't talk without talking about those two characters. They are, mm -hmm. they are like, you know, and, <laughs> and what's the word? It's role model, mentors, my go-to examples all the time. God told, gave Joseph a dream, a vision. Mm -hmm. He was going to be mm -hmm. a leader. Mm -hmm. David was anointed to become a king, but they had that season. They had mm -hmm. that season. My book that I've been writing mm -hmm. forever, a few days ago, I was writing on this same issue. I was writing mm -hmm. on that, using these two examples. Mm -hmm. They had that, that season in their life where it didn't look like it. How can mm -hmm. you, you just, just, David just got anointed and then for the next several years of his life, he was mm -hmm. like a fugitive. He was in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. His life was going up and down and up and down, running away from Saul, sleeping in caves. Okay? And then did Joseph had a dream, was supposed to be a leader, then became a slave. And from being a slave, it went even worse, going into a dungeon. Mm -hmm. But what was the secret of these two people that took them to where they were? They became, I mean, they got to, eventually that season happened. That's the thing that I want to say to you. One thing is that they didn't take the vision of their eyes. Mm. They focused on that vision. They mm. held on to that dream. They didn't mm. lose that dream. They didn't lose that anointing. They didn't lose, in the midst of all that they were going through, they didn't mm. lose sight of what God has said. Keep mm. God's word for you. Don't mm. lose sight of what God has said. Keep speaking God's word. That period, that valley period, that wilderness period they went through was all mm -hmm. shaping their character for where they are going. Remember we talk about being ready. It mm -hmm. was what prepared them. There's time we not allow, our time is gone. The time mm -hmm. will not allow me to, you know, break this down further to you mm -hmm. because there's so much that happened in their lives in that mm -hmm. period. If it had not happened, if they didn't mm -hmm. go through that, look mm -hmm. at Saul. Saul didn't go through that period. Mm. What, how, look at how he failed to go through it. But because mm. they went through that wilderness period, mm. his character was shaped. He became mm. one of the greatest king ever. Mm. Same thing with Joseph. He was able to forgive. He was able, he learned forgiveness. Mm. He learned bitterness. He learned betrayal. All that mm. things that leaders should know. But mm. he had to go through it. So whatever you're going through, all I'm saying is that focus on the promise. Hold on to God's word. Hold on mm. to what God has said. Learn all that you need to learn in this period because it is mm. all for your good and it will come out. You, God's word must definitely come to pass in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much. What, all that, what, that, what you just said now, I can sum it up in a phrase I heard from somebody. The person said he, he was talking to a very successful person and then the person, this person said, he, okay, let me say uh, this is a mentor to him now. And then I think it's a she actually. So he asked her that if there's one thing you need to tell me that will lead to my success, what will you tell me? And then the mentor told him that in your dark moment, hold on to what you heard in the light. Light. Because mm -hmm. when God is making promises to us, usually you are in the light. When God told, told, them, told Joseph that his brothers were going to, to bow to him, there was no darkness. He was not in prison. 
But when mm. he went to prison, the challenge now is that how do I believe God? Or how do I continue to hold on to the promise of God that people, my brothers are going to bow to me? Because the way it is right now, it doesn't look like it at all. Mm. And for somebody that is hearing us now, okay, maybe you, you, ha- you heard the promise of God before, before things got bad, and you are doubting it, but God is reminding you through this um, talk today that I'm about to do a new thing in your life. And when you look at your situation, it doesn't look like it at all. In fact, by the time you add everything up, you, you are just, you're just wondering, how can this thing add up? Mm. Remember that God's ways are not our ways. Mm. And God's timing also is not our timing. So when you add one plus one, you are thinking it should give you two. But in God's agenda, it can be anything. One plus one can be anything. One plus one can be 10,000. Because he has a way of multiplying things. He has a way of speeding it up. That is mm. why he's a God of miracle. So in addition mm. to what Mary said, I just want to encourage you, hold on to the word of God. Draw closer to you in this season that you are. If the season that you are is not a very convenient season, if it's not a, a season that is comfortable for you, if it's a season that, that, have, that is so difficult, that is so tight for you, hold on to the word of God. Yeah, that is what the Bible refers to as the night season. But God mm. also says that even though weeping endures for the, night, for the night, joy comes in the morning. Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Joy comes in the morning. If mm. Mary were to tell you that when she was going through all those stuff, getting pregnant when she didn't plan for, and then at eight, eight about seven months plus, you, mm. okay, you're pregnant with twins, you lose one of them. And mm. the other one, the prediction the doctors gave you, in fact, they, 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 they were putting pressure on her to abort the baby because... They said this child is just going to be useless. This child is going to tie you down. But she mm. held on to the word of God. Her health, her life was at risk. Her health was, was suffering. She said everything around her was like, you have gone haywire. But mm. she still held on to the word of God. So if at that point, somebody told her that things would turn around and this child mm. that they said would not be normal would be okay today. But now we mm. full time primary school. I mean, mm. there's no way you would have believed it then because the situation did not look like what the reality that we have here right now and that is what god can do in your life as you hold on to him i don't have time now to tell you my own stories but if god told me that i will ever smile again i wouldn't have believed it Hmm. because there was a season in my life that it looks like it was all tears and heartaches and all that but look Hmm. at me today as i smile i smile genuinely people know me for my smile that is is what god can do if we hold on to him If you are watching us right now and the season that you are in does not look like what God is laying in your heart, like the promises that he's making, just believe God. Blind followership, that is what you need right now. When you are going through that kind of season, just just believe God. Just be deaf to any other thing. And God, I don't know how you are going to do this, but because you said it, I'm going to hold on to you. I'm going to believe you. And as you do that, you will see God turning around things for your good in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Our time is fast gone now. Oh, thank you so much. Christopher is saying, even in the will of God, there are challenges, which is absolutely true. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they don't tell us these things in the church, but it is true. When you give your life to Christ, (laughs) there are challenges. Exactly. That is why a lot of people fall back when they experience these challenges. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He said, say for her to go to Macedonia and then. God told him to, uh, to go to Macedonia and he ended up in the prison. And then he's also saying, remember uh, Isaac and Rebecca, even in the will of God, they had 20 years delay. So mm-hmm. yes, let us just follow God blindly. And at the end of mm-hmm. the day, as you hold on to God, he will not disappoint you. Remember what Mary said earlier on? He will not turn the thermometer higher than you can bear. So whatever you are going through right now, he has confidence in you. God mm-hmm. has confidence in you that you can bear it, mm-hmm. that you will not disappoint him. And we mm. also have confidence in you that, yes, because God is allowing you to go through this season, he knows that you will go through it. And at the end of the day, it's going to all turn out for your good in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, so we're going to be going now. I don't know, Mary, if you have any final word for our viewers, just go ahead and say it. Well, I think we've said, we uh, basically said it all. Um, we just to hang on there, hang on there. And for those of us who are believing God for a new season, get to work. Don't go and go. Don't, it's not time to lie down. Go to work. Go and get ready. Expand and enlarge your coast. Enlarge your tent and get ready for the for the plenty that is coming in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. So, and just before we round up now, I'm just going to ask Mary to pray. If there's anything you want us to pray about, put it in the chat. We are happy to pray with you. 
And for everyone that is watching with us, that has stayed with us for this past hour, we really appreciate you. We really appreciate you taking this time mm. out to be with us. We know how busy it can be, especially on this Saturday. So we appreciate you for taking this time out with us. And we believe that you there's something you've gotten from this conversation today. So go out and work with it. Don't let the word of God fall to the ground. Don't let what you have heard today be a waste. Put it into use and you'll see it working wonders in your life in Jesus' name. So before we go, I'm just going to ask Mary to pray for us. We'll, we'll just pray for people as you are led. Whoever is going through maybe a difficult season, especially pray for the grace of God for them and just prophesy or whatever God lays in your heart to do, just go ahead and do it. <laughs> All right. In the name of Jesus, Father, we give Amen. you praise. We worship you. We adore you. We glorify your holy name. Thank Amen. you for this time we have spent in your presence. Thank Amen. you for all, you know, the utterances that have come out of us. It's all of, of you. Amen. I believe and I trust in my heart that you have spoken to people that you wanted to speak to today. Healing Amen. has come. You have mm. backed up your word, oh God, with healing, mm. with deliverance, with encouragement and hope in the heart of your people. I pray for as many who are watching us right now and those who will watch even later, that God, whatever season they are in now, especially for those who are in that trying season, who are in that difficult season, who are in that winter season of their life, I pray for the grace, oh God, to withstand it, grace to go through. I pray for the grace for them not to back down, back out, oh God. The grace, I pray for grace for them not to give up, oh God, not to quit on you, oh God. I pray that they will hold on and they will be strong in their faith in you in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that God, that this season will not be elongated because we know you are, you, you are the one in charge of season and you can change it whenever you want to change it. And no one can question you. You can bring snow down even in the midst of, of summer and no one can stop you. You can bring out the summer even in winter and no one can stop you. We pray in the name of Jesus. There are people that you have to cut short their season just so that you will show them mercy. Jehovah, I pray that you will do that for them in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus Christ. Lord, your healing hand touch your children. Amen. Let your hand of grace reach them. Amen. Let there be deliverances in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And for those who are working into a new season, I pray that God will our capacity, oh God, we start expand our capacity ready to receive it, oh God. Father, let our testimony be that God, you yes, said it and it came to pass in the Amen. mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We give you praise and we give you glory in Amen. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. amen and amen and amen. Christopher said we should pray that God will bless you with that one million pounds we are talking about. So we say God bless your son in Jesus' name. But I hope you are ready. Are you ready to manage it? If you are ready, may God give yes, it to you. May it come speedily in Jesus' name. And don't forget to set your sight when it comes as well so that we can all partake of it. So once again, thank you so much from me here and from Mary. We just want to say thank you so much for joining us. God bless you all. God amen. bless you all. I saw my, my sister, Veneta. God bless you. I can see Joe saying amen and amen. 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 Keep coming in. Yes. <laughs> oh, he said I'm born ready. All right. No problem. Your one million pounds is coming in Jesus' name. Okay, John, one, one million, two. God bless everybody with everyone with one million. <laughs> Amen. Is our season of more. Let's, let's change our mindset of being little. Amen. 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 God bless you all, and I'll see you next week, every one p.m. UK time. I do life class with Ayum, so I'll see you again next week for another session of life class with Ayum. And the end of the month, the last Saturday of the month is when we do the live chat. So if you continue with me any any day, feel free to do so. And please share this video if it has blessed you. Because if it blessed you, I believe that it will also bless somebody else. So until we see you again, God bless you. Bye-bye. Right, bye, everyone.